This morning we're following on from our dismastering exercise and uh, we're going out to practice jury rigging. Uh, the poor old boat's taken a bit of a battering as you can see. We've managed to retrieve the bottom section of the mast um, during the dismastering exercise. There's absolutely nothing been added to the boat since the mast went overside so we're totally reliant on the bits of equipment that we have and uh, so the, the trick is going to be thinking up an effective way of a jury rig. Because we haven't got any entries for rigging, running or standing at the top of the stump, uh, we're removing all the loose lines from the base of the master to try and keep it clear and simple. Uh, and the halyards that we'll rig will be external. With this stump we're fortunate because we've got mast winches, which is not always the case, but we've got three winches on the mast which I'm sure we can put to good use. Um, so the plan now is just to, to clear away the bits and pieces and simplify it. Uh, we've got an assortment of blocks here. Uh, first off, I'm looking for three blocks for holding the mast up because we will need to adjust the ropes that we put up for holding the mast up, our jury rig mast. Um, number one candidate is this lovely old fashioned toughnel block, which is stainless steel bound uh, and has roughly a 10 millimeter pin. So my estimate is that that's got a safe, safe working load of well over a ton. Um, we could do with two or three of those at least, but we, we appear to have only got one. We've got a selection of lines here. It's important to choose the least stretchy and quite obviously the long enough line to hold, hold the, the stump up. Um, my first choice would be the Dyneema. Uh, this is a, a braided co uh, cord Dyneema, uh, which is extremely strong, but we haven't got a hell of a lot of it. So we're gonna use this for specialist things, uh, which I think will be lashing the blocks down, which are gonna effectively be our chain plates. For the shrouds, we'll use the best quality piece of braid on braid that we've got. Uh, we've got a, a remains of an old Genoa halyard, uh, which will be long enough. And uh, I think that was an old Genoa sheet we'll use as the shrouds, uh, which will be the, because they're at the narrowest angle, will be the highest loaded members in the rig. We will also rig a forestay uh, and a backstay just to uh, help the load downwind. Positioning of the shrouds needs to be reasonably carefully thought about. Uh, we could use the original chain plates from the yacht, which are obviously going to be the strongest point. However, they are set inboard on this boat, so the tension in the shroud will be considerable. In order to try and relieve that a bit, we would like to move the chain plates further outboard and further aft. So we've got more angle on the mast, which will in some ways compensate for the stretchier rigging, because we're using rope rather than wire. Uh, so, on this boat, we believe that we've got a bolt through bolted tow rail. Uh, we should be able to spread the load over two eyes uh, and going to come substantially further aft than the previous after rigging. Uh, and I'll start off with a by si simply cow hitching the bowling through, through the guard rail. So we've immediately got double the rope there to reduce the chafe. Going to want to keep the blocks fairly low so that we've got a good lead to the winch. Uh, we want the shrouds on the winch so that we've got some sort of control over hoisting the mast so we can guy it slightly and some guying effect when we're hoisting it. Okay, well, we're just putting those shroud terminals on the top of the stump now. These are the things that the forestay and the shrouds are going to be attached to. And these are the terminals we're using. 
ingenious little uh, arrangement there. So that hooks over there and the shrouds attached to these to hold the stay in place. Just got a few more on there. shrouds now so that's the line going through the turning block the Genoa turning block through our new shroud brace improvised shroud brace and that will go up to the starboard terminal on our mast for the back stay well no for oh, the block store uh, yeah good one that's doing a four stay okay. uh, we need something for the back stay uh, which okay so now we're putting the uh, the halyard turning blocks on. So this one will be for whatever we turn into a Genoa. This one's going just under the four stay on the same terminal. This is just a block that we had kicking around the boat. Uh, it wasn't used for anything in particular. It was probably going to be a sort of, um, I don't know, use it for barber hauling or something. Just a general spare block. Okay, so we're ready to try and hoist the stump uh, at the moment. We've attacked it, attached some temporary shrouds, uh, a temporary foresail halyard and a halyard on the back of the mast together with a backstay. Uh, we've put a temporary lashing on the heel out of a bit of a stretchy line on purpose so that it's got a chance to jiggle itself. And uh, the first part is, is grunt. Uh, the second part is pulling on the forestay, which Mr. Beeson's got here. Uh, and uh, we'll guide it up with the shrouds as we go. Might work, might go over the side again, uh, but we'll give it a go. It was easy and I thought the stump didn't weigh as much as I'd imagined, so it's fairly easy to kind of manhandle into place. We did try and get it square on the step, you know, in the position it was originally, but um, you don't want to get your fingers in there, so we've done as best we can. It's just outside the lip on the port side, um, but yeah, I guess if we grind it down hard enough on the shrouds, which is what we're doing now, then it should stay put, and then we can stick some sails on it. There. Okay, so what we're doing, we're, we're cutting the mainsail 
horizontally across just above when a sail's set the right way up, the second reef point. We need to think about this a little bit. If we cut it where it's going to come under load as the new foot of the square saw, it's, it's liable to rip. If you think of uh, an A4 sheet of paper, put a nick in one edge, hold it up and pull on that edge, it will tear very easily. If we put a nick in the paper and pull in the middle of the piece of paper, it won't rip. So we're not going to cut it off tight to the reef point, we're going to cut it off a foot or 18 inches below. Uh, it looks quite a mess at the moment. We've got bits of rope and bits of sail all over the place. Um, hopefully in about 10 minutes time, uh, we'll be a fully fledged square rigger. Uh, we've got a nice bit of breeze today, so we'll see how tidy we can make the boat sail. Okay, it's an interesting moment now. We're just about to hoist our square saw. Um, don't know whether it'll fit or not. Not too sure how well it'll make the boat sail, but uh, we've got sheets and braces on it so we can adjust the angle. Uh, decent breeze. We'll see what we can do. Okay, are you ready to hoist? Uh, mind your fingers. Back on that yard. That's easing this year. Uh, so that's the forward on the side, taking on top of the We've got our jury rig set, which is a square sort. We're easily making better than 180 degrees between tacks, despite there being a little bit of uh, slop here in the Solent. The important factor being is that we can now make our way off of a lee shore. Uh, if we've got sea room, we've got time to do anything that we want to do. We can improve the rig we can get away from things. Uh, we're not exactly in racing form at the moment, but we're making a fairly steady two knots. And uh, in, a, in a good moment, we can get the apparent wind round to about 70 degrees. Okay, we've now uh, re-hoisted our square saw with uh, the trisail behind the mast, giving us a little bit more bite. Uh, so we're going to try and get a little bit closer to the wind. Uh, it's the great increase in power uh, has got us well up over two knots now, and we're not making any leeway. And uh, makes it feel much more like a sailing boat now. The basics of it are get a mast and hang some sail off it. So whether that, if we didn't have a stump, then we could have maybe done this with the, the main boom using the spinnaker or the spinnaker pole and use the main boom as a yard. There, there, there are ways of doing it, or A-frames maybe, but it just depends. You know, you get some sail up one way or another. So you need the elevation, you need some sort of spar. 
Uh, we've just managed to do it with the, uh, with the, with the stump.